Here's Dr. Rocket. You'll require picturing programs. It provides, among other things, some examples of images. Click Run. And we'll see all's well and what those images look like. Now hide the interactions pane. So we're working just in definitions. We're going to define a function rosette in a more systematic way than we did last time. So first we start off with a contract. Input and output. Both images in this case. Next, a purpose statement. These lines that begin with semicolons are ignored by Dr. Rackett, but they're really important to human beings who are reading and planning programs. First, let's check what we expect Rosette to do. Here's an example. What do we expect Rosette to do with the image of Hacker? Well, it's going to have to put two flipped versions of Hacker side by side. So one flipped version puts Hacker above its vertically flipped self. And that's how we do that. That's enough typing that we should probably copy it for later use. So what we're going to do is put that beside its horizontally flipped self. There, that completes our expected version of Rosette of Pick Hacker. What do we expect Rosette to do with the calendar image? Well, here's what we expect, something very similar to what it did with the hacker image, except calendar is going to appear everywhere that hacker occurred before. So once again, we're putting the vertically flipped pair of calendars beside a horizontally flipped version of themselves. I can put that on another line. Dr. Racket will just indent it where it thinks we mean it to be indented. Now I define the function header. Keyword define, left for n, the name of the function, and any placeholders or parameters I'll need. Function's name is Rosette. We're going to use the pick placeholder everywhere we have an image. So it would stand for calendar if we were applying Rosette to calendar. It would stand for hacker if we were applying Rosette to hacker. To start with, we'll just do a stub. We'll do something totally stupid and useless that couldn't possibly be what we expected just to get, just to get our foot in the door. So if I run this, not completely surprisingly, it doesn't work. It reports that I failed all the tests. It does better than that. It tells me how I failed them. It says the actual value, that empty circle, is different from what was expected, that 2x2 two two array of hackers. Second test was failed for similar reasons. The actual value doesn't match 2x2 two two array of calendars. So we'll go back and try to fix this. Again, we'll work just in the definitions pane. And we get some inspiration by looking at our examples. They have very similar form of instructions. The only thing that really changes are the actual images that are provided. So we can emulate the approach in our examples to create the function same sequence of instructions except everywhere that hacker or calendar appeared we put our placeholder pick. Fast to type because pick is nice and short too. Done. So now we run this 
and it reports that we passed the tests. We are in fact correctly producing the rosette of hackers and the rosette of calendars. Yippee isn't legal, but it's fun to type sometimes. Let's review this recipe for functions. We need a contract. We need a statement of purposes. We need to state our expectations using check expect. We need to define a function header. That defines the name of the function, rosette in this case, and any parameters we'll need as placeholders. Finally, we need a function body. It should either work or at least be a stub to hold the place for something that does work. Thank <laughs> you.